How's it going everyone and welcome back to Coxie Tutorials. In the last tutorial we made a very simple C-sharp script to make this fan spin inside of our game. As you can see if you follow the last tutorial I've actually bumped up my speed to 300 so the fan spins a bit faster and I've actually gone ahead and put the script on the other fan over here as well so now both of my fans spin. I've also gone ahead and I've got this fan audio clip and you can download this in the description and this is actually copyright free so you can use this for whatever you want including commercial use and all you have to do is just grab this uh, audio clip and drag it straight into the audio clip slot on the fan wing 01 the same game object as our um, fan script is attached to and the audio source has already been set up for us so it's already been ticked to play on awake it's going to loop and also it's been set as a 3D sound and the minimum distance which you can hear this audio clip is controlled by the curve in this graph and the max distance you can hear it is set to 5 so basically you won't hear this sound for the fan unless you're actually standing right underneath it which is what I like. You don't really want to hear the the fan when you're anywhere in the level because that doesn't really make sense but you can uh, play with this and set it to how you want. So what we're going to do today is we're going to write another um, C-sharp script and this is going to be a really great script to show the difference between <clears throat> excuse me between how you would write a coroutine in JavaScript compared to how you would write a coroutine in C-sharp and if you don't know what a coroutine is and you followed my last tutorial series we actually use coroutines in JavaScript quite a fair bit you just might not have known it but um, as we write this script I'll explain to you and you will understand what I'm talking about so this script is going to be used for our light and it's going to control the flickering of this light and it's going to do it um, between a random amount of seconds so say between one second and ten seconds and yeah let's go ahead and get started now so just I'm going to use this light next to the fan I'm just going to click on the light and we have the light empty game object which is the parent of the light 01 and the spotlight and on this the child light 01 you'll notice it has a mesh render and these two um, shaders the neon and diffuse and if you open up the mesh render you can see them in these slots here and the problem with this neon um, shader is that the neon shader is actually this bright colored light here that isn't actually the light itself that is just an actual shader material um, on the object so if we turn the light on and off it's still going to look like the lights on so we need to change this and you can do that by coming over here and you'll have exactly the same materials as me if you've been following along so I'm going to change mine to glass because that just makes sense to me but you can do whatever you want um, now I'm going to click on the actual spotlight and this spotlight game object is the one that actually has the light component on it and we can enable and disable the light through this component so I'm going to change the color of my light to red just because I can you can choose whatever color you want and now we can go ahead and actually make the script so if we add a component new script and call it light controller I probably should have called the fan fan controller but if you want to change the name to fan controller just keep in mind that if you change it there it's not going to change it in here so you need to make sure that both this name here and this name here are exactly the same or the script is going to not work so anyway open up light controller and I'm going to change the brackets around and get rid of this and also get rid of the update function because we don't need that I know this is probably driving some people crazy but you're just gonna to have to deal with it because this is just how I like to set it out and it, it makes it easy for me to read my own scripts and yeah you just do you just do what's comfortable for you basically so 
I recommend that you set it out the same as me so it's just easier to read mine and compare it to yours in case anything goes wrong but it's completely up to you. Anyway, so for this script we're actually going to need a variable for the actual light itself so we just write light and then we call it the light and once we've got that there we actually need to access this light component when we start the game so when we press play to start the game we actually want to get hold of this light component so that we can actually use it so to do that is very easy because the light component is actually attached to the same game object as the script so all we need to write is the light equals get component and then the component we want is the actual light itself and then you do your open and close parentheses and the semicolon it's a little bit different than how we would do it in JavaScript but you'll get used to it and now we can actually access the light when the game starts we can actually do our coroutine and if you remember in the last tutorial series the coroutine was when we were typing in yield return wait for seconds and then we'd wait for a certain amount of seconds so I'm just going to comment this out because C sharp isn't going to like it at all so we were writing yield return wait oops wait for seconds and then we'd actually write how many seconds so we might write like one second so this would actually stop here and wait one second before continuing to read the next line of code you can't actually do this in um, in C sharp so I'll show you how we actually do it in C sharp and to do it we actually need to make basically like a function and write I enumerator and then the name of it which will be make light flicker and you'll notice straight away <clears throat> that it gets this red squiggly line under it and it says not all code paths return a value and for everything else in C sharp like when we have a void in front of the function name it actually means that it's, it doesn't have to return anything it's not going to return anything so for the I enumerator we actually need to return something so we write yield return just the same as we did in JavaScript but now we write new and then we, write, then we write wait for seconds and you would put in how many seconds you want it to wait in here but we want it to be random so we're going to actually use random.range which is built in function of unity and then you do you open and close parentheses and you'll see here that it says uh, float random.range so if we're going to use a minimum um, value float and a maximum value float it's going to return a random float number between a minimum inclusive and a maximum inclusive so what this is saying is if we have two floats and say the minimum float that we're going to use is one second and the maximum float we're going to use is 10 seconds it could wait one second before making the light flicker or it could wait between one and 10 seconds to make light flicker or it could actually wait 10 seconds to make the light flicker if we used integers instead of floats for the minimum and maximum the maximum would be exclusive and what that means is it would only if you had a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 10 it would only choose a number between 1 and 10 it would never actually choose 10 so I hope that makes sense we're going to use floats so yeah I really hope I explain that okay but we need to make these actual floats that we're going to use now so up here I'm just going to use serialize field you can make them public if you want but um, I'm going to use serialize field and make my floats private so float min time before light flickers and then I'm going to write serialize field again because you need to do it above each private variable that you want to be displayed in the inspector so for this one I'm going to write float max time before light flickers okay so now we can use these two floats down here so make sure you put them in between these two parentheses here 
So min time before light flickers and also the max time before light flickers. And then put your semicolon on the end. And underneath this, we need to actually enable or disable the light. So to do this is very easy. We just write the light dot enabled equals is not the light dot enabled. And if you've ever watched any of the the genuine Unity tutorials, I think when Unity 4 came out, it was the first time I saw this being used and it was for a flashlight script. And what this line of code does is just say the light was on, it would actually turn the light off. And if the light was already off, the light would turn on. So it's basically going to do the opposite of what state the light is already in. So that's a really handy line of code to know. It's also very good for um, booleans or true or false statements to switch them to true or false or just change them from the opposite of what they were. Um, so now we actually have our coroutine set up and we need to call it and we're going to call it in the start function. But the only problem is if we call in the start function it's only going to call this once and it's and it's just going to it's just going to read these two lines of code and then that's it. And we don't want that. We want it to just keep going through these repeatedly while the game's running. So it's very easy to do that. We just I'm just going to grab these two lines of code and going to cut them out and just write while true and then open and close curly brackets and just paste that back in. So while this is true, it's going to loop over and over and over and over again and just keep reading these two lines of code, which is what we want. So in the start function, to call our actual coroutine, all we need to do is write start coroutine and then open and close parentheses. And then you just, it's easy just to copy and paste it. And make sure you get the parentheses as well. And then just paste it in between these two parentheses and put a semicolon on the end. And when the game starts, it'll actually call this coroutine. There's also another way to do it, and I'll just show you just for the sake of showing you for anyone that actually wants to learn. Um, start coroutine, and then uh, open and close quotation marks. Oh my god, I couldn't think then. And um, all you need to do is actually put the name this time, not the parentheses. So just paste that in there, and then put the semicolon on the end. So these two lines of code do exactly the same thing. And then we can just save that. And if we go back into Unity, we should get our two floats here, the minimum and the maximum time. And if I set the minimum time to 0.1 and the maximum time to one second, so that's 0.1 of a second and that's one second. So now it could make the light flicker after 0.1 of a second or it could make the light flicker between 0.1 of a second and 1 second and it can also make the light flicker after 1 second. So if I go in and play the game now and I go up to the light you'll see that it's just randomly flickering between them to float values. So you can put in whatever values you want and play around with it. Obviously the smaller the numbers you use, the quicker it's going to flicker. And yeah, that's it. So if we stand under our fan, hopefully you guys can hear that as well. All right, so that's the tutorial. I hope that was helpful for some of you guys. And yeah, I appreciate you guys watching again and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, cheers.